I can't hear you, John. Everybody's so loud. 40 seconds. Well, y'all got 40 seconds to empty out. Once I start, I don't want to hear y'all. Go on, girl. Enjoy yourself. Go on, Nate. Play, 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 play. Play, Nate. Play, play, play. Welcome to Faith Christian Center World Outreach. Those of you that are watching us, live streaming this morning, everybody in here is releasing all of the bondages, the closet clothes, the face masks, all that stuff. We are free in the name of Jesus. And I pray this morning that you enjoy the presence of the Lord God wherever you might be. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning for the power of your spirit. By the witness of Jesus Christ that he's come and given his life. And by the witness, O oh Lord God, that you sent your son into the earth. Now the blood of Jesus speaks richly for us. In the presence of our high priest in the highest throne of heaven. We now, Lord God, are free in Jesus. Because who the son sets free is free indeed. We thank you for the liberty of your word, your house, your presence, your great power and atmosphere in this house this morning. And we invite all of those that are watching us live streaming this morning to join in and accept the presence of God to come into your house for where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is, always will be, liberty, freedom, happiness, joy, gladness, celebration, and glory given to God. Amen and amen, amen. Amen and amen. Well, you guys take your seats this morning. We're going to spend a little time getting rid of pumpkin here today. If any of you guys were here last Wednesday night, you heard me say some things about pumpkin head. An old movie that represented the, the life of a, a sad and disappointed father. Disappointed at the death of his son too early and he solicited the help of a demon to help him take revenge and we still have people today soliciting the help of Pumpkinhead to take it uh, uh, you know to revenge what's happened hundreds of years ago that there's nothing you can do about we still today have men and women crying over disappointments and shortages and still soliciting as the tribal nations did before Almighty God thousands of years ago. They had their own tribal deities, their own cultural deities, and they served them and they worshiped them, and then God came on the scene. And he pronounced himself as Yahweh, L-O-M. He pronounced himself that he's creator of all, regardless of how many other deities there may be present and presenting themselves, he is almighty God. And so this morning, you and I, we're before the church of the firstborn. You and I are part of God's forever family. And so we salute with our hearts the priority of the throne that's on our hearts, almighty God, because he is Lord heaven and earth. Amen? Amen? So salute the Lord God this morning. Give him praise as we get into the word of God and as we receive the power and the presence of his life. Last week we began sharing with you guys last day fathers. How last day fathers should be. And this morning I'm going to continue with this last day's fathers because it's important for you and I to know that as fathers we have a particular role with the destinies of other people in our hands. We have the privilege to yield 
certain prophetic words. And we're going to get into these prophetic words that we talked about last week. Uh, but we've got some more because there are many prophetic utterances that come uh, from the pulpit. Uh, you heard uh, Dr. L. I don't know what she's up there doing right now. She's getting out an umbrella, purse, every kind of thing. But you guys heard last week, uh, you know, when she stood up, I told her, I said, go say, you know, speak, whatever. And so she got up and God used her to prophetically speak some words out uh, over Elder Russell, who was sitting in the back with his oxygen tank because he'd gone through the COVID thing and, you know, and uh, it had affected his lungs and whatever. And how long had you been on oxygen? Three months. Three months. Come up here, sir, because they need to see you. Because yeah. some people hear me saying something about him on oxygen, they go like, well, who is on oxygen? Well, here he is. I'm going to let him stand right here. Get right here behind him. Right here, there you go, right there behind the word, all right? And so she prophetically got up and said that she see God healing, she see God doing this, all the things that she said. I was in the back, I came back and I heard, I was going like, okay, she, she got it going on. And uh, he was, he had your oxygen last week, right? Yes, sir. And uh, this week, what is he, what are you on this week? Nothing. <laughs> he's on, he's on God's, he's on God's air. The mercy of God, that's what I always call it. Every day, every breath we take in is the mercy of God, all right? And so this week, so I had him to stand because I wanted you to see, all right? Some of you have been tremendously affected in this time by sorrows, disappointments, uh, premature deaths, all kinds of things have happened. But I want you to know today that if you continue to dwell in the land and do good and feed on God's faithfulness, not the banker, not the businessman, not the, you know, the, the, the doctors. They, they have a lot of reports that they can give and tell you what's going on. But there's somebody who made you. Right? A doctor's like a mechanic. Every now and then something happens and you go to the mechanic, he can diagnose and tell you this is that and whatever. But if you want a new part or original part, you got to go back to Detroit. Are you guys with me? Here he is. Thank you, son. Good. Isn't God good? Now, let's get into some of the prophetic utterances that fathers need to hear in these days, all right? All fathers. And this is not just for fathers, but I just used it last week because guess what? We were dealing with Father's Day. Everybody was celebrating Father's Day, and I pray that you enjoyed your father if he's alive. If he's not, enjoy him because he's gone on to be with Jesus, whatever it is. Enjoy everything that God brings into your life. But today, we're going to talk about this first utterance. Uh, it's called an utterance of deliverance, okay? Because there are fathers that need to be delivered today. I don't know about you, but I know fathers. I talk to them sometimes, and I see some that need to be delivered, okay? Uh, you guys ever heard me talk about the, uh, the bird? The bird in the store? Okay? All right, the bird in the store. Let me do this real quick. There was an owner of a store. And he had all kinds of goods and articles, things in there, and people would come in the store. And he had those big birds up at the front that could talk. And so when this, this particular set of customers came in, a husband and a wife, they come in, and the bird looks at the woman, and he says, ugly. <laughs> and so, now you guys have heard me say this before, all right? But it's for the benefit of the people out there. And he said, ugly. And uh, the customers turned around and looked at the birds, you know, and that's kind of disappointing. You come in the store, you know, and the bird tells your husband, I mean, your wife, that she's ugly. All right. And uh, so the bird kept on watching the lady as he was moving through the store, and he'd say, ugly. And so she got a little ticked off with the bird. And, you know, they went up and talked to the owner. And the owner came back, you know. And uh, come here, Dick and Fun the Bird. I'm going to show you what the owner did. <laughs> I mean, dig in front of the bird. Come on now, come on now. All right? He don't know what his pastor's going to do. <laughs> yeah. like, he grabbed the bird like this. He grabbed him. He shook him around. He smacked him a couple of times. Bap, bap, bap. You know, and then he put him back in his cage. All right, you can go back. You're great to do it. You notice he submitted to me doing all this. Just, he put him back in his cage, you know. And so the customers were walking around. They were sort of like, you know, gratified then. Yeah, see, you got it. You got what was coming to you. 
And then, uh, you know, the bird didn't say any more to them. But then when the customers were leaving the store, the bird looked at her and said, you know. <laughs> you know. All right. You know, okay. Now, what's the great meaning in many different situations about that is that there are fathers that know that they need deliverance. There are fathers that know that they need help. There are fathers all over that are walking in pretended ignorance, knowing that there are certain things that are within them that they need to fix. And this is why you and I are so important in these days because we carry the word of God that can help anybody in any situation if we would just apply the word to them. Are you guys with me this morning? So this first utterance or prophetic utterance is one of deliverance, all right? And this is found in the book of, the book of Acts, all right? Come on, go with me this morning. The book of Acts, oh, chapter, we can go to 16. We can go to 16. And those of you that are out there, you know, turn your smartphones on, uh, you know, get everything lined up because you know. You know. So you know when you're playing games with God. You know when you are hurt. You know when things are not the way they should be no matter how much you struggle. You know. But we need to have prophetic utterances spoken to fathers. We cannot hide as Christians. We cannot hold back. We are the wall between the world and heaven. We're the bridge that's there that they can cross. And we cannot sit back as warriors of Almighty God and shine our armor up, clean our shoes, and just stay at home. And don't talk to people. We have to be able to tell people that this is what you need. And I believe for you also, young man, that the presence of Almighty God will saturate your life today and every day that the power of God will raise you up in Jesus' name. Amen. Regardless of what it looks like, we live by faith. Amen. Faith says that my hope is sure that what has been promised is mine, and my faith says this, that guess what? It is certain that even though I can't see it, it exists for me. Amen. In Acts chapter 16, oh boy, we're going to bypass the, the encounter which Paul had with the Dasmal when they were, you know, they was always saying something. We're going to jump over to verse 25. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and they sang, song, they sang praises unto God, and, and the prisoners heard them. All right? And it says, suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all of the doors were open, and every man's, everyone's bands were loose. Somebody say loosed. And the keeper of the prison awakened uh, out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew his sword and would have killed himself, supposingly that all the prisons, that the prisons had fled. But Paul cried out and said with a loud voice, do thyself no harm for we're all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and he came trembling and he fell down before Paul and Silas and he, and he brought them out and he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Something supernatural has happened in this place. And I understand that it's beyond and bigger than all of us. What must I do to be saved? And they said unto him, here's the prophetic word of deliverance. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou, and thou shalt be saved and your house. And there are so many fathers that need to know that today that not only will they come under the salvation of Almighty God, but also because of their relationship with the Lord, that God will extend it down through their family members. He will pull out as many as will be willing to come to him, as many as will call on his name, because his mercy represents his name, his title, his destiny, his mercy is present for every man, woman, boy, and girl, and that mercy is available today, and all we need to do is to say things around people. Instead of talking about the football games, that will pass away. Instead of talking about the acts and the movies, those will pass away. The world and everything in it is passing away. But to talk to people about that, 
which will be forever, that which will last when our bones are dried up and God is still waiting for a perfect day to resurrect us and to give us life. You got to have some chocolate. Ariana, you got to have some chocolate. You got to have some chocolate. Thank you, doc. In the, monster, the movie Monster Hunter, you guys remember that movie? Anybody looked at it yet? Oh, come on. Somebody said, oh, my fingers are kind of wet here. I got it. I got it. The anointing will remove burdens and destroy yokes. That's right. That's right. Amen. You guys remember, there's a scene in the, monster, the movie called Monster Hunter. Those are the only kind of movies I'll look at. And there are two particular soldiers, right? But the one who's the aggressor, he changes his mind. He opens up a different attitude because the soldier that's stranded offers him chocolate. It's amazing how little things change our lives. Some of y'all sitting there like, I want some of that candy bar. <laughs> That's a big thing right now. It's amazing how little things can change a father. I remember the day when I was standing in the house with my wife, and I was not so fatherly. And, you know, I was going to always have my way. And she asked me, are you born again? A little thing to me at the time. Are you born again? And I said, yes, I am. And at the time, guess what? Yes, I was, but I wasn't living like I was born again. And every father needs to have little words that don't just come from the flesh, but come from God to help you. And because of those little words, here we are. If she had never spoken those little words, you and I wouldn't be here because God would not have had a pathway to walk me on. His words are what? A light unto our what? And a what? Lamp unto our what? Path. That means that God uses his words to set us on the course where we should walk. And he gives us light to see. Every father has to have that. Without that, the world has so much focus that comes that causes even the little prophetic words to have no power within themselves. See, I'm going to teach, all right? Because it's absolutely necessary that all of you get up off of your blessed assurances this year. You've been taught the word of God for 30 years. You've been taught things that other people don't even hear. And you have the privilege of the power of the word of God in you that can come out and change somebody's life and you can cause somebody's destiny to become something that it never would become. I look at my Uncle Cleveland sitting there who came here. I have the first time you came here on picture with my brother. You don't even know I have that picture. You know, and ever since, that's been years ago. And what did he tell me when he walked up here? He said, the Lord told him to come here. A little prophetic word that people hear every day but they do not heed it because they do not understand the power of prophetic words come on go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 29 29 this morning you guys in the house I know you guys listen to me I know Pastor Milton's listening to me good morning how you doing Pastor Milton's down in Mississippi Enjoying time with his family, friends. Family member passed. They're down there. 
And I'm sure he's doing the same thing this morning. He's telling people. He's speaking words to people's lives, letting them know that prophetic utterances can change your life. Just one little word. You know, Kenneth Copeland used to say this years ago, just one word from God can change your life. Just one word. Deuteronomy chapter 29, 29. You guys there? The secret things belong unto the Lord. The secret things. The things that God don't want you to know right now. Okay? They belong to the Lord. But he says this. But those things which are revealed to us. All right? Prophetic utterances. Things that are revealed to us. They can come. You can get a prophetic utterance in a dream. You can get a prophetic utterance in a song. You can get a prophetic utterance with somebody standing up and using that prophetic voice to speak to you. Okay? But the prophetic voice comes and it reveals things to you. And guess what he says? The things which are revealed to us belong to us and to our children. And not for us to just sit down on, but that we may do all the words that God speak to us. So you and I have the privilege that when a prophetic word comes to us, not only do I recognize that now God is speaking to me, but he's speaking to my children. Not only does God want me blessed, but guess what? He wants my kids blessed. He doesn't just want it for me. He wants my neighbor to understand that God's working in the world to change things. He brings certain words to us to cause us now to know that you can live in a realm that other people can't. That's what revelation knowledge does for you. It puts you in a realm. Remember Peter? Jesus said, ask his disciples, who do they say I am? And everybody was saying, oh, you're Elijah, oh, you're a prophet, you this, you that. And Peter stood up and he said, you know something, you're the Christ. And what did Jesus tell him? Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father which is in heaven. In other words, you had the opportunity just now to go into a realm that nobody else could. See, this is how powerful prophetic words are. I've seen people get up, had cancer when they walked in, left here healed. I've seen people that didn't have the mind to have a job and God give them a position that nobody could move them from. I'm telling you tonight, I was talking to Brother Zinn this morning and, and guess what? I, I was talking to his father a while ago and, and his mother has gone through some stuff for the last two years, right? Been two years, you know? And he was standing up telling me this morning, he says, man, my mother's back. God's brought my mother back. You know, and I told him, I said, when I was talking to your dad, I heard your mother walking through the house and I heard all this noise, banging pots and stuff. And I said, what is all that noise? What are you doing? He says, that's not me. That's Irma, my wife, man. She walking all through the house, cleaning the house and doing. And I said, well, thank God. Praise God for the power of God. You know, see, if you don't give up, when that prophetic word comes, if you don't give up, yes, God wants you blessed. He wants you a millionaire. He wants you rich. He wants you wealthy. Yes, if he told you that, then that's what he wants for you. So you got to do Psalms 40. Roll with me this morning. Let's get rid of pumpkin head. Psalms 40. Again, we've had too many things in our life that we've given ourselves over to, thinking that they are going to cause us to be successful. And we need to give our lives over to one person. Just one person. He's an audience of one when you pray. He's an audience of one when you worship. He's an audience of one. And every father needs to know this. When you are put, you stand in your place, God will work on the rest of your family. Amen. Regardless of what it looks, I'm getting real close to you. Regardless of what it looks like, if you, as a father, would line yourself up with the ways of God, you will find that God will begin to already knit things because he goes into your future and fix the problems that you're going to encounter before you get there. And you've got to know that about him. If you don't know that, you're going to try to fix everything yourself and you're going to mess up. Because you know that woman's tired of hearing you saying what you what you what you're supposed to have. 
My wife used to come home and ask me every day because I wasn't working. You got a job yet? No. She didn't know that God was fixing it. Here we are. <laughs> she didn't know at the time, but every day, I used to, I used to just walk around to the house and say, oh boy, she's going to be here in a few minutes. Let me find something to do. And every day she'd come, you got a job yet? I said, no. And I knew it. You know, I knew every day it's going to happen. About this time when she get from Richmond, she's going to ask me. But see, I was listening to the Lord. and He was telling me, you're going to be a first. And I used to tell her that. We didn't understand all this stuff back then. This is 30 years ago. We didn't understand this stuff. 30 years ago, the Lord told me, you're going to be a first. We didn't understand it. First what? We came and we invaded the enemy's territory. This is the enemy's territory that we built this church on. Civil war, bloodshed, brothers killing brothers, cousins, uncles, and everybody. We're here where blood was shed and demonic worship was done. For family members to kill family members, that's demonic work. And here we've been here fighting to bring the truth of God's word to people in the enemy's ground. See, this is what makes you so special. I know your husband told you he loved you this week, Tammy, didn't he? You know, y'all been on vacation. You know, he told you, oh, Tammy, I love you, I love you, I love you. But God loves you a whole lot more than Robert because God can see a whole lot more than Robert can see. And he loves all of us to a point where we don't understand how much he really wants to give us until we start opening up our ears to hear and having our eyes to see what God wants to happen in our lives. In, in Psalms, Psalms 40, verse 5, it says this. Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonder, wonderful works which thou hast done. And thy thoughts which you have toward us. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. And if I would declare and speak them, they are more than I can, that can be numbered. In other words, you just think God just wants you well, this, well, that, wanting this. God's got thoughts that you ain't even thought about yet. That he's thinking about you. He's got things that he's planned about you that you ain't even got to. And that is why it is so important to be open to the prophetic word. When the word comes that you listen to it, you intently give yourself to it because you don't know what God's thinking about you. See, you're always thinking something good about you. But God's always thinking something better. See, you're thinking on the carnal state. God's thinking on the eternal state. You're thinking where there's limitations. God's thinking where there is no distance. See, you, you're binding yourself by one little thought, and God's got thousands of them waiting for you. See, this is the power of knowing who we serve, that as a father, if you line yourself up, you will find out that God will bring things into your life that will burn away pumpkin head. Somebody saying, who's pumpkin head? Any deity, any class, of social status anything that you hold that you believe that is going to cause you to prosper and have whatever you need in life it can become a pumpkin head and it'll take your life in that particular movie Holly did not know that when he gave that blood he didn't know that he gave away his life. He didn't know. He just thought that he was going to have some vengeance. His son was going to be avenged, and he was going to be a happy man, and it ended up costing him his own life. And we got so many fathers that are serving pumpkin heads today and don't even realize that it's taken your life. How long are you going to grieve over that lost one? when you can enjoy them in eternity? Hmm? How long are you going to sit around and think about disappointments that happened to your grandfather or your great-grandfather or your great-great-grandfather when guess what? You can be enjoying right now the pleasures of the Lord. How, how long are we going to hold on to stuff like that? They're pumpkin heads. They're just killing you. And you don't even know they're killing you. Y'all getting quiet on me. Don't get quiet on me because we got more to talk about. Come on, go with me to Luke chapter 5. Another 
prophetic utterance that is absolutely necessary for fathers to take in in these days is the prophetic word of identification. They don't know who they are. Men and women that don't know who they are. Little children don't know who they are. The prophetic word of identification. It declares, guess what, over you, that you are more than what you think you are. Right now, it might seem like you're broke, busted, and disgusted. But when a prophetic word comes and says, I declare that you are acceleration, then what are you going to do? Are you going to believe what you can't be, or are you going to believe what God says you can be? See, you're going to have to choose what you're going to believe. Look at somebody and say, it's all up to you. It ain't up to God. See, it's all up to you. See, you're going to have to believe what you're going to hear, what you're going to receive, and what you're going to become. Because there are many people that will tell you, you will never do this. I remember when we bought the property, we paid cash for it. Mm, chocolate is good. You remember at the end of that movie, that young man came and I said, lady, she he says, got any more chocolate? Because chocolate, again, a little thing, can change everything. All right? Now, I remember when we bought this property and we put the sign up on the road. All right? God woke me up, brought me over here, you know, showed me the property. We bought the property and guess what? We put a sign up there that said, Faith Christian Center, coming soon. We were letting the devils know going to be a fight. All right? I had Christian people would drive down on the property and stand there and tell me, y'all not going to do anything up here. I had preachers used to come and tell me, we've been up here for 13 years. We've been up here for 35 years. We've been praying every morning. I said, and I, and I told one of them so bluntly one morning, I said, well, who are you praying to? Because he told me. He said, we come and meet every morning. Told me the seven preachers that met, well, the six others with him. And I said, but who are you praying to? That you can't do anything for God. It, it's, there's another word, asinine. How can you say you believe God, but you don't give God the opportunity to be God? You know, when, 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 we, when we first started, when we, you know, there weren't any chairs in here. There was no wall here. There was no foundation here. There was no ceiling here. There was nothing here. All it was was a piece of ground with a whole bunch of trees on it. And Mrs., uh, what was her name? Miss Fortune. When we bought this property, Miss Fortune met me at the mailbox one day, and she's passed now. Miss Fortune met me there, and she says, I grew up here. And I would have never believed in all my life that there would be a church over there. I said, darling, believe because we're working on it right now. You have to get to the place where you know that when God speaks to you, that God is changing your identity. In Luke chapter five, you guys with me this morning? We got a couple minutes and we're gonna let you guys uh, rejoice like you were rejoicing a little while ago. This is the story of Peter and Jesus investing in Peter because Peter had loaned him his boat. And so Jesus is using Peter's ship. In verse 3, it says, He entered in one of the ships, which was Simon's, and he prayed that he would thrust out a little from land. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep. He's gone beyond Simon's faith realm. Go, let's go out into the deep. It's daytime. We don't fish in the daytime. Let's go out into the deep. It's daytime. We don't fish in the daytime. We fish at night. So the fish can't see the nets. Let's launch out into the deep. No man can work at night. We must work while it is day. Let's launch out into the deep, Peter. Peter's going like, we can't catch fish during the day. We can only catch fish at night. Nevertheless, at your word, he was going like, I'll let down the net. Not nets like Jesus told him, but net. Disobedient because guess what? He hadn't had enough chocolate. (laughs) 
Simon answered to him and said, we've toiled all night because we catch fish at night. We don't fish during the day. That's ludicrous. We sleep during the day. Work at night. That's what's wrong with the church today. We're still sleeping. we still sleeping. We lay down and we sleep. Remember years ago I told you, I said, the milkman's up, the mailman's up, and the man of God sleeping in bed. Hmm? we still sleeping. We got to wake up. See? Because one day, just like today, we might be here when Jesus comes. You know, you guys might be running all around the place or praying or crying or whatever. You may be at home just getting up out of bed. It's going to be a day just like today when he's going to come through the heavens like lightning and going to take all of us with him. Scripture can't be broken. Every Christian needs to know that. Every Christian needs to know that. Scripture cannot be broken. All right? It is going to happen regardless of what you feel or think about it. Scripture cannot be broken. All right? And when God speaks, he's telling you something in utterances. This one, identification. Some of you, God, had, he identified years ago. You ain't caught up with your name yet. Some of you, God, identified many years ago. And guess what? You have not gotten over into full faith yet. You're still looking at situations. And because you look at situations, you can't handle things. See? It says this. Y'all want some chocolate? Simon said, we've told all night. We've not taken anything. Nevertheless, it's your word. I'll let down the net. He's just being, you know, casual, you know. I'll do this because you say do it, like most people do in church. They don't do it because there's something behind it to bring them a greater reward. They just do it because, you know, you pastor or you whatever you say, well, I'm just respecting you in a certain way, but you're not respecting because you're not following the full word. See, you're not respecting. And he says this. When they did this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and the net break. See, if they had the nets, nobody else would have had to come and get his blessing. If he'd have let down the nets, he could have took in the full blessing of God for himself. But because he was disobedient, he had to share. Because he was disobedient, he had to share his full blessing with other people. Because he needed the help that the blessing wouldn't go away. Y'all can say amen right there. Because somebody out there just got that. See, when God gives you something to do, don't be sitting around waiting for everybody else to do it for you. <laughs> Woo. And he beckoned unto their nets break, and he beckoned unto his, their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. And when Simon saw it, he fell at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Remember the bird? You know. Hmm? You know. You know when you are whatever. You know how you are. You know all of the, you know, what we call it, the... Um, Punch list, what's that punch list that's in the house? You know. You know all the things that are inside of you when God comes to you. You know all the things that need to be fixed. You know. And Peter falls down and he says, I'm a sinful man, O oh Lord. Get away from me. Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. For he was astonished and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which had taken. Why did they take the catch of fish? Because of a prophetic word. A prophetic word, thy word is a light unto my what? To my feet. A what? A lamp unto my pathway. So when, when Jesus spoke to him, let's go out and let's catch a draught of fish, Jesus was letting him know then that your pathway, your feet are going to change. Where you're going is going to change. Prophetic words. 
And we don't spend any time with the Holy Spirit to understand these prophetic words because, again, God's thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. So we're always thinking on our way. We're always thinking on our thoughts and never give time to God, as it says over in Psalms 40, verse 5, because his thoughts, he has many thoughts toward us, many thoughts toward us. And we're always sitting down and thinking about one or two. Let me get out of this situation. Lord, help me when I go to court. You know, fathers need to hear this, see, because it will make a difference in your life. It will get rid of those controlling spirits that's in your house. When you stand up and you start doing pumpkin head, will leave. I ain't get too many amens on that one, but that's all right. I'll say it myself, amen. So you got to get rid of pumpkin head, because pumpkin head is there to destroy you. It says this. So was also James, son, John, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were partners with Simon. And when Jesus, uh, when, and, and Jesus said unto Simon, fear not. Prophetic word of what? What did I just tell you? Hmm? Identification. Prophetic word of identification. Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch Men. Peter didn't understand that when Jesus said it, but Jesus did. And see, and that's all that matters. I don't need to understand a miracle to have one. Uh, are you guys with me? I don't need to understand my bank full of money to just to have it there. I just said, whoever want to put it there, put it there. You know, I don't need to walk around and take, take notes and go like, well, you know, I got to wait on this person. I do not, I do not need that. All I need is the man at the bank to say, your bank is full of money. And I'll say, thank you, Larry. And I will write the check. I won't back up and say, well, when was this deposit? Well, who put this in? Well, how much did they give? I won't do all of that. I won't go through all those, all those things that's backing up from my blessing. I'm going to go forward with it because if it's given, then I'm going to use it. And so when God gives us a word, we ought to use it. We ought to take the word and say, you know something? I heard Dr. Allah got up there and said, you know, that God's changing this. He's making this happen. He's going to do this. So guess what I got to do? I, I got to believe that prophetic word. I can't just sit here and go like, you know something? Well, no, I want to stay. I'm calm and my lungs are hurting. Lord, please, you know my heart. What'll happen? What'll happen, Ella Russ? You've been in here this morning with your tank, you know, pulling around, telling everybody, if y'all can't breathe, I'll help you. <laughs> Every father has to have a time when he has his identification, not everybody else's. When we, let's go to the book of Acts chapter 3. I could go to Matthew 16. Mm. You guys been on the call for the last couple of nights? I hope you learned something. Get rid of pumpkin head. Acts chapter 3. Somebody's still out there going like, who is pumpkin head? Pumpkin head was a man who walked in a generational curse. He died living a curse of a demon. And he was buried in a graveyard that they grew pumpkins in. And so when the demon was ever called upon, that's why his name was called Pumpkinhead. All right? You don't need Pumpkinhead in your life. You need chocolate. Chocolate. The Word of God, taste the Lord and see how good he is. Mm, 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 mm. 
He's better than Herschel. <laughs> I think you want some of this, don't you? <laughs> He's better than Herschel. Acts chapter 3. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. A certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried. Please get the picture from his mother's womb. They laid him daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered in. A hopeless life, that this is all he can do all the years of his life. It's for someone else to carry him and for him to beg. And how many fathers do we have today that other people are carrying? And all they do is beg. How many fathers do we have all over this nation and this world that all they do every day is wait for somebody else to carry them somewhere? If you do this for me, if you do that for me, if you do this for me, if you do this for me. And then they get into the habit of just, my life is just to beg. It says, this man was carried daily. That's every day. That was not once a week, like you guys attend church. This was every day. Seven days a week, he was carried to this place where it says that there were like 15,000 men that would be in attendance. And when these men would come in, they would give him some alms or whatever, or somebody would feel sorry for him and give him. There were like 15,000 people, men, that attended this place because at this time it was a, it was a society based on how men lived. All right? And it says that who seeing John, Peter and John going, it says he asked an alms of them. Why? Because that's all he had ever been taught to do. This is all he was ever taught to do, was to beg others for his living, was to ask others to give him what he himself could not provide for himself. Isn't it ironic that we have a culture? I grew up in this culture. That all we want is somebody else to do something for us to blame everybody else for what we won't do for ourselves. Oh, you guys, don't, 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 don't shut me out now. Black lives do matter too, but not by themselves. All right? Black lives matter with every other life. And isn't it sad to see that after all of these years, all of the knowledge we have and the technology and whatever, that we are still further behind than we were when we came over here. Because we are still wanting somebody to do something for us that Jesus is already taken care of. And people don't want to say anything about it. Y'all want to be hush up. Y'all want to be those warriors that sit at home and shine your armor. And don't stand for the kingdom of God. We are kingdom people now. Culture, I'm glad I was born a black man. But when I leave here, I'm going to be a glorified man. I'm glad that people are born this way and that way. But when we leave here in Christ Jesus, it ain't going to be no more black, white, blue, green, purple. You're not going to be a rainbow when you get to glory unless you walk back into God's throne where his throne is and where all the colors of the rainbow are. That's the only way you're going to be a rainbow man. You should be tired of people doing for you and you should have been converted now to be able to help do for others I've been sharing with you guys ever since we started this ministry and why don't you want to be the owner why don't you want to be the one who's in control of this why don't you want to have four or five streams of income why do you want to just sit around all the time and depend on somebody else to take care of you that goes against spiritual law of creation. God made us in his image and in his likeness. His image simply tells you and I that we have the ability of choice. You could not be in his image if you did not have choice. See, 
because choice gives me the privilege to choose which way I'm going to go. God chooses which way he wants to go. He made us in his image and in his likeness. His likeness is that he called those things which be not as though they were until they are. We have the power of words to speak words into our life to cause things to happen for us because we choose. We don't sit around and just go like, do this for me or feel sorry for me. Or I put fear in you to make you do something for me. That's not of God. And I'm telling you, Christian people, you're going to have to wake up and find out who you are. Your identity means a whole lot to what you're going to become once you know it. It says, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked in arms, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. And Peter said, silver and gold I do not have right now, but such as I have, I give thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Get up and walk, man. And it says the man, he took him by the hand and he lifted him up and immediately, somebody say immediately. immediately. Don't need fasting, don't need prayer. Don't need staying on, on course for five days. We're going to look at this for 10 days and then we're going to meet again. It says immediately because the power of God is always available immediately when you use the name of Jesus because the name of Jesus represents all power. So the power is available immediately whenever you're in any situation. And when I need to know who I am, like Peter found out who he was supposed to be, he is called to be a fisher of men just like God called. And Peter is fishing right now. Peter's throwing in the hook He's telling the man, listen, I don't have the bait that you think you're going to bite, but I do have some bait, and that bait is the name of Jesus. And if you take that bait, instead of the bait you've been taking, which is sickness and disease and lack and all disappointment, if you will take the bait that I'm giving you this morning, you can get up and walk. And it says the man bit. Don't you like it when fish are biting? How about it, William? <laughs> don't you like it when fish are biting? Chocolate. Peter gave the man that day some chocolate. He said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have is a taste of Jesus. And he says, I'm going to give you this taste of Jesus. Peter has now discovered who he is because of the prophetic word of identity spoken to him by Jesus. You're going to be a fisherman of men. Amen. I'm going to stop right there because I could go all day. But I better not because we got to deal with pumpkin head. Chocolate. Got any more? Chocolate? Some of you guys can go home and look at that movie now. Monster Hunter. Chocolate. Got any more chocolate? The chocolate bond, those two soldiers together. That in the midst of fighting, the last battle of that particular movie, the young man showed up and saved his comrade. And then he asked her, he says, you got any more chocolate? because chocolate was the thing that caused him now to give his heart to protect somebody that he knew would protect him. Got any more chocolate? Some of you guys are gonna go home and empty out the stores today before y'all get there and buy some more chocolate. Because just giving away something as simple as chocolate caused the bond. And if you've tasted the Lord and know that he's good, you're going to give away some chocolate. If you've tasted the Lord and you know that he's good, you're going to give away some chocolate. Those of you that are viewing us live stream, God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. We believe that the priority of our hearts is set to keep heaven's gates open to whosoever will. Jesus has given us tribulation, 
kingdom and patience to work this out. Will everybody accept you when you talk to them about Jesus? No. They didn't even accept Jesus when he talked to them about salvation. But there are many who are appointed because God made a promise, and Scripture can't be broken. He made a promise to Abraham that because of Abraham's righteousness, that every family in the earth would be blessed because of what Abraham did. I believe that no matter what names have gone through history, Somewhere in there, you're going to find a thread of somebody's family that God has pulled out that thought would have been extinct. It could be you this morning that God's pulling out. Might be someone in your house that needs to be born again. Could be someone on your job. Could be somebody that you just passed by the other day and you were talking to them and you heard all of the vulgar talk and all of the stuff that came out and you just felt in your heart that they needed to know about Jesus, ask the Lord for another encounter. He'll give it to you. But our priority is to keep the gates of heaven open for as many as we can bring with us. So we invite you this morning. If you've not accepted Jesus Christ as saving Lord, please do so right now. He's Lord because of his power. He saved you because of his mercy. So when I accept him as Lord, his lordship comes over my life, and then the mercy begins to clean up all of the stuff, all the sin, all the disappointments, all the hurts, rejections, all the things that nobody else could ever do because he saved you. And I'm telling you, he'll do the same for you and for whoever you know whoever you invite. It's a wonderful thing to know that somebody just accepted Jesus because of your prophetic words. Now, am I telling the truth this morning? Is it, a, is it a great thing to hear when somebody, you tell somebody about the goodness of God and they just break down and their heart becomes soft and they become, you know, like, oh man, this is what I need. Isn't it powerful to know that Jesus saves? And so this morning, Get some chocolate. Get pumpkin head out of the way. And let's find your true identity in Christ Jesus. He'll change your life. My wife and I, we're witnesses. And all of these, they're witnesses. He'll change your life. He'll give you a new name, new destiny in him. Please don't pass up this prophetic invitation for eternity is too long to be wrong let's get it right amen God bless you thank you for viewing today and if you're out there and even if you're far away other countries we have people in Canada Europe all over the world watching us if you believe that God is desiring you to be connected to this house, connect yourself. Become connected. Let us know. We'd love to have, have you as, you know, uh, uh, members that can maybe start ministries in whatever country you might be because there's no distance in the spirit realm. So let us know what's going on in your life. Email us. Call us if you have to. Uh, again, get Amazon to drop you off. They're quick. Let us know what's happening in your life and, and uh, how much we can share the love and power of Jesus Christ together. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for viewing us today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. You guys say amen. 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 Well, isn't the Lord.